Welcome to the YouTube platform of Blabla Canada. Today, my friends, we will be talking about how Canadian big banks are investing in immoral projects such as Dakota Access Pipeline and how we can solve this problem as common mortals by turning towards ethical banks. Wait, 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 what the hell are you talking about? I just thought that the world of Canadian banks was all just rainbows and butterflies. No, not really. First of all, we need to understand the concept of ethical banks. Ethical banks are shockingly banks that have strong ethical policies. To be more accurate, basically, these banks are usually more concerned with the social and environmental consequences that their loans and investment will trigger. What? If you still have no idea what I'm talking about, let's take an example of ethical banking and unethical banking. Bank A is an ethical bank because in the last couple of months it has refused to invest your money that you saved on your bank account in projects led by giant oil industries. So the question could be why did they refuse in such profitable projects, right? Because they have a moral compass that tells them that it's extremely unethical to invest in projects that will have a negative impact on the social life of indigenous people, on the biodiversity and on the world climate. The opposite example is Bank B, which does exactly the opposite of what Bank A did. Bank B basically will invest your credits in projects that will take families and communities away from their land and homes, that will put many animal species in jeopardy, that will pose an immediate threat to the drinking water of nearby communities, and as well will contribute to climate change and its traditional impact. Oh my god, but why are unethical banks causing so much harm? Money, money, money. Wait, wait, uh, I, I just realized something. The major issue in Canada is that the most powerful and common banks that we know of are just examples of Bank B. They don't care about ethical banking. They don't care about corporate social responsibility. They don't care about socially responsible investment. They don't care about any of them. Wait, can you throw me an example that could prove your point? Yes, I can give you three names of banks. TD, RBC and Scotiabanks. The three Canadian banks are major supporters of the Dakota Access Pipeline and its associated companies. Yes, even big banks are investing in big oil. TD Securities is directly financing 444 million Canadian dollars toward the construction of the pipeline as well as the oil and gas infrastructures from one of the pipeline joint owners, Energy Transfer Partners. RBC and Scotiabank are providing 414 million Canadian dollars and 121 million Canadian dollars toward respectively Energy Transfer Partners and Sunoco Logistics, another joint owner of the Dakota Access Pipeline. Canadian banks are using more than 979 million Canadian dollars, almost 1 billion from your credit, from your money that you saved on your bank account, in order to invest in completely unethical projects that will ruin the environment and the social life of thousands of people. Are you okay, man? You, you seem sick right now. But maybe you don't really care about this type of investment because you don't care about climate change. So let's see something else. What about the fact that Canadian banks are investing in nuclear weapons? Yes, in fact, in 2013, a report by a European peace organization claimed that hundreds of financial institutions all over the world are investing billions of dollars in companies that are involved in the maintenance, production and modernization of nuclear weapons. Eight of those financial institutions, the report says, are located right here in Canada. Yes, these eight financial institutions are involved in the financing of these multinational corporations to the tune of 4.55 billion Canadian dollars. Now let's look back at the three Canadian big banks that we were talking about, TD, RBC and Scotiabank. TD Bank invests in 935 million Canadian dollars, RBC invests in 948 million Canadian dollars, and Skodia Bank invests in 1.186 billion Canadian dollars. 
This means that only these three banks investing 3.069 billion Canadian dollars. So the next question can be in which companies are these financial institutions investing in? So the eight Canadian financial institutions invested all of that money in a majority of American corporations. Indeed, only five out of 16 corporations were non-American, which means that 70% of the corporations that the Canadian banks were investing in were American. I would not be surprised if a significant part of our credit in these Canadian banks were to be invested in American weapons that would be used to totally destroy North Korea, as Donald Trump claimed a few weeks ago. We will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself. So yes, okay, to totally destroy North Korea, but as well to put an end to the lives of millions of children who were just indoctrinated by a communist authoritarian regime and who did not have any choice but to live in the country of North Korea. But above all, what is very funny and very sad when we look at all of this investment is that after all the financial scandals, crises and promises to act in a more responsible and transparent way, we still have evidence today that the same financial institution continue to make unethical investments into the weapons of mass destruction and into projects that will destroy our mother earth. If you care about all of these investments, this unethical investment from big Canadian big banks, I encourage you today to turn towards what we call ethical banks, just like the example of Bank A that we were talking about. There are a few examples of good corporate citizenship in the Canadian financial sector, such as the example of Vancity. Just check out their website and maybe, who knows, you will be their next engaged customer. This is how today we're going to end this blah blah. I really want to hear from you, so please feel free to leave comments to express your thoughts, your opinion, what you maybe did not understand, what you hated, what you liked, what you loved about this blah blah. If you really like what I blah blah about, and you think that more people should discover this channel and these videos, please hit that like button and share this video on any social media that you want. And as well, if you do not want to miss any other blah blah that will be released every Friday, don't forget to actually subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page to not miss any other video. That was Blah Blah Canada, the alternative by and for the common mortals, and I will see you next Friday.